<laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started our meeting. Well, uh, I want I appreciate you guys inviting me here today. Um, I'm always excited to talk and share stories and and tips and things that I know and also learn from other um, anglers as well. Whenever I have the chance, whether it's out in the water or it's out in meetings like this, I'm I'm enthused. I'm always enthused to to, to find like-minded people. And so today, I'm really hoping to share a little bit of uh, introduction to bait fishing. I've been doing this for quite a while now. 15, 20 years that I've been fishing. And so I've learned a lot through my times, a lot of trial and error, uh, and a lot of things from talking to other fishermen and tips and tricks and things like that. So um, I'm all about education, I'm all about sharing what I have and my knowledge with other people. So um, we all can have a great time when we're out there, not just twiddling our thumbs. <laughs> and we're actually catching fish, you know, and although spending time out there enjoying isn't always, is always a good thing as well, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I definitely want to help you guys to catch fish more and, and I know some of you guys maybe have used some of my tips and have caught a fish and I'm really enthused when that happens. <laughs> okay, so um, so I know, I mean, as much as you guys see me out in the water and, and kayak fishing and all this stuff that I do, um, I actually fundamentally love bait fishing a lot. <laughs> I equally like it as much as I like the other stuff. So uh, you kind of have it you like what I'm, I'm doing today. So a little bit about myself here. Um, I'm part of the CCK fishing team. California canoe and kayak fishing team. So my primary vessel that I fish off is off a kayak, right? I can I have fished off a boat so many times before. It's just where the kayak is where I, I get my fish. <laughs> I've been doing it for so long. I love the exercise. I love it. Um, and the CCK fishing team loves having me with them. So it's being presented by them. If you guys want to know a little bit more about kayak fishing or anything about that, you can visit any of our three stores uh, in the Bay Area and up in Comanche Cordova. And if you don't want to get into kayak fishing, I completely understand. It's a little nuts sometimes. <laughs> Not to say that. Okay, I'm a little nuts. <laughs> but I can catch fish. I like to fish too. Let's go. All right. So, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Keith Nguyen, also known as TLA or the Los Anchovy on the greater internet. Um, I started fishing about 15 to 20 years ago and it really just started out um, fishing from, from the shore, like many people before. And, and then I slowly got into the kayak fishing scene as it started to uh, arise. And I'm talking about this is like the early years when like, they had one kayak and they just put rod holders in there and they say, hey, this is a fishing kayak. <laughs> so I was at the very beginning of all this trend that's kind of been taking over uh, fishing for quite a bit. And, uh, and, and it's been a great ride ever since then. I mean, I've been trying to kick the habit, but I haven't figured out a way quite yet. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Now I have a website, now I have a jersey. What the heck? <laughs> it just keeps getting worse, but I keep meeting new people and I keep meeting uh, lots of like-minded people and there's nothing more uh, I enjoy more doing. So, so I think it's a good thing, right? I met this guy too. We've been rapping together. What's up, brother? <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> so uh, I'm a member of NCKA North Cal uh, Kayak Fisherman since uh, since the very beginning, and I'm also a director of the Halamita uh, uh, Halamita Rockwall Halibut Tournament. If you guys have been there, yeah, I don't know if you guys have, but it's a fun, great tournament. We have like 80, 90 people show up within kayaks, uh, searching for the largest halibut, right? And this year we were able to raise roughly about a about Thirty-seven, thirty-eight hundred dollars for a, a cause for the local area for people who actually um, go out and um, and clean up our bay and estuaries and they do cleanups and they have no money, you know, to do it what they do, right? right? And so he said, you know what, this is a great cause. We're going to support you. We raised thirty-five, thirty-seven hundred dollars for them so that they can have expenses, they can clean up their stuff, and they can do it, and they can do what's, you know, what some of us can't always do, right? And they love doing it, so why not support it? It's a good thing. Yeah. So we were able to raise that much money for them this year. And we, we look at great um, things to support throughout the year. You know, every year uh, is a new tournament, so it's a new cause that we're gonna support. So we're looking out there to, um, to, to do that. Um, uh, 2022, I'm part of the, um, the Hobie um, fishing team and also the team manager for the CCK fishing team, which is like four or five of us as well in there. And each one of these guys are experts in their own area, you know, and then they, uh, they do seminars as well and they help people out. And, some, and maybe you guys went to the Fisherman's Life, you probably saw one or two of them out there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm part of the team. And obviously a YouTube personality, blogger, blogger, you know, that's, <laughs> that's all comes with the territory. <laughs> Follow me, like, subscribe. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that's why he's like, I hate you, I guess, Robbie. Who are you anyways? You look bald. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about our, our seminar outline, guys. Okay, so uh, introduction. I'm gonna, I did introduction. I did the background. 
we're going to talk about types of baits available in California and then more specifically the the types of uh, species but how and how are you going to target them right and how are you going to get them and how are you going to find a way to save yourself money instead of paying 10 12 15 dollars on every time you go out this is crazy i mean prices used to be six dollars then they went to try then they double <laughs> and then and even if they're out there you can't even find them so it's just like eh, it's getting a little sketchy now so let's go find a way to actually catch ourselves some bait save ourselves some money catch ourselves some fish and maybe if they see everybody's catching it they re reduce the price a little yeah all right so <laughs> california regulations we'll look at regulations and at the very end uh, we'll go over questions and answers and along the way maybe i might give some crazy stories of the things i've learned over the past and maybe i'll yeah, keep it to myself <laughs> excuse me hey frank <clears throat> frankie <clears throat> frankie are you there <laughs> frankie frankie Did frankie <laughs> it's all right they can hop on uh instagram yeah, but Jane's. Yes, yes I am. Yeah, there might Jane's still is waiting to get in. She's there there might be some members waiting. There might down. be other members that are waiting to get in. Oh, yeah. Go. All right. You got it. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that, man. Oh, okay. Then we're gonna go into some California regulations, things you may or may not know, and then we'll um, we'll get into questions and answers. A lot of you guys may ask me these things, and if I know, I may know. If I don't know, I'll bluff and you know, and you'll call me. <laughs> <laughs> just call me out. I'll, I'll say I, I, I'm just kidding. I'm lying. Uh, okay. All right. Let's look at some live bait here. Live bait. There's lots of types of live bait that is in the Bay Area. So I'm gonna go over a few of them. We have uh, top smelt. We got jack smelt. We got shiner perch. We got Pacific anchovies. Leave the anchovies alone. <laughs> we got uh, Pacific herring. Uh, we got live squid, mackerel, Spanish mackerel, Pacific herring, uh, lost uh, ghost, ghost shrimp, live shrimp. Uh, live shrimp. Uh, live shrimp. Uh, live shrimp. What's that thing? Go shrimp. Fresh shrimp. Fresh shrimp. Okay, um, I think there's some specific questions regarding mackerel, I think. If you guys have that, uh, just, just raise your hand any time and then I'll, I'll answer that. Okay, for you. Okay, so fresh shrimp. So we'll go over a few of these. Okay, <coughs> so the first thing is the San Francisco herring spot. This is absolutely my favorite time of the year. I'm just kidding. It is. <laughs> it is one of my favorite time of the year is because it's just... When I first started doing the Pacific herring spawn, it was just a handful of people that was doing it. Mm -hmm. And over the years, um, it's gotten to be such a great community and everything that we've been doing. And people who've gotten into it have really, um, you know, been sharing the information and sharing and helping other people to, to get on these fish. Because they're actually a very difficult fish to catch if you're doing it all on your own. It's actually almost impossible to catch it if you're on your own. You actually have to have <coughs> a well uh, connected community to actually find these fish especially when they're coming in and uh to me personally the the herring is such a uh such a, like the, a dynamite type of fish for to catch everything on in the ocean especially when the time comes and that's why you guys see them so expensive out <laughs> when, when they're selling up for like what six or seven for ten dollars now or something like that but these herring are just absolutely amazing and you can eat them you can freeze them, you can use them for bait, you can do whatever you want with them. But personally for me, I, I use them for bait. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick YouTube video that I did on the Pacific Herring Run this last year. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it or not. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I'm, I'm just gonna try to <coughs> capture, you know, um, a little bit about the, the Herring Run. And this runs about, about maybe about 10 minutes, but I'll try to trim it down where I think it's just kind of not, you know, busy talk. So, so the video you went out with Max? Uh, no, it was the one before that one, yeah. Yeah, I went out with Twee, but I, I don't know if you guys have seen that. I saw the one with Twee. Yeah, so I'm just going to show that really quickly, and um, but uh, I'm going to just kind of cut through at, at different scenes. Quick shout out to uh, Flossie. This is your first time. This is a daily semi-deranged kind of fishing, but around the time of the year, the routine area this episode, I go on four trips to chase down the elusive San Francisco Pacific herring spawn. This natural yearly occurrence begins in earnest in December and runs all the way to March. If you're a fan of Pacific herring, either for food or bait, this episode is for you. In this episode, I'm joined by my friends, the Wobblers. He's on my friend. Tweet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Danny. Jay. Fernando. I'm also excited to do a collaboration with a special guest, Fishman's Life, who is also a big fishing YouTuber himself. 
I'm excited for this episode. So let's get started. If you want to know more about the San Francisco Parents Mart, you can visit my website at www.losanchovy.com or I have many tutorials that come with this event. There's also an active community of Pacific Heron hunters that share information about the spawn and spawning locations that help you get on the fish. <coughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dealing. This is just me so, talking. <laughs> So I'm just gonna. I don't know. I've decided what we're gonna do. Yeah, you guys are just. So during the herring spawn, you just wanna run around and you see everyone just trying to catch a fish like this. <laughs> and whether they get it or not, it's, it's a big, you know, crap shoot. But it's a lot of fun. So we'll just see where everything's gonna go. Carlos and I are just kind of enjoying it right now. Maybe they'll come in a little. Maybe they'll come in a little. Uh, closer and a little bit. But right now, they're just kind of laying outside where it potentially could get some saggy. So, let's see. Don't the snacks. Hey guys, look at the snacks by the lot. Andy outdoors! Andy! I heard you gotta kill a cat, you know? What do you get, Andy? There's a piece. There's a piece of family repairing hunting. There's a piece of family repairing hunting. There's a piece of family repairing hunting. beginning of the season oh, yeah, it's really right. difficult to get them before they start coming in yes. so you have a lot of missed opportunities like too <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of missed opportunities and then you get on the full spawn and that's when it really happens very few fish being caught uh, okay. so you have to keep changing keep moving we are out here then you kind of move on past <laughs> this okay so this day I just go a tweet yeah. So Tui actually went on this, this this day, and it was actually on the, his uh, his wife's anniversary, and so he, he went he, he dared go out with him on the anniversary. So we we had a good lunch for him. So because it does probably be his last meal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this San Francisco? Yeah. This is this is a. What time is it? It's late at night. Sometimes it's at like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like wow. Night. Sometimes it's early in the morning. You don't know. Where's your bucket at? Right there. This one bucket and the 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 to us. Oh. They tell me and they say I'm the one that tells everybody to go. Promise. Promise. It's the only person here who can watch it. What? Yeah. 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 They all blame me for putting everybody to this parent party. It's a tough really? one. <laughs> uh, uh, over by uh, down that way, but we're back at Spinnaker. Nothing yet. We did get one, as you guys saw earlier. Not so. <laughs> <laughs> anything else. Uh. Pacific herring, like most fish, are extremely high dependent, which means that they tend to spawn very the change of the tide. Around 12 a.m. in the morning, the tide moved right and, and the fish slowly started to move in. This wasn't an open spot by any means, but we were able to get a quarter bucket and half a bucket each. <laughs> Look at Tui's face. <laughs> you cannot get that. <laughs> it's always <that> legal. <laughs> it's very <it's> legal. <laughs> and a lot of grinding to get a few fish. We and I decided to take the boat out and try to get a better position on them. 
with a double rainbow on the horizon to bring you that lady luck was on our side. Things were finally starting to turn around and we were ready for the herring spawn to finally get going. I knew from past experience the schools were on the way in and fishing was only going to get better from here. Things were finally picking up and we were steadily getting fish on every cast. Spawning herring are highly sought after for the road which is sent to Japan as a delicacy. So this one's over by Sausalito. Um, it's on the other side. Yeah, we can't get there by uh, by just throwing up the land. You have to get on the boat, or you can use the kayak. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so we got into a pretty big uh, spawn right here. And right along the rocks, they tend to spawn right along the rocks right here when they, when they happen. And you can see the water it tends to be all white right there. That's the milt from the carrying. Hmm. That's just a few casts. Sometimes we get like full blown casts. And you see the water, see how yeah, these? Okay. That's it right there. That's how you know that it's on. Wow. Okay. Wow. You said you were doing something like that? You can do it in a kayak too, but you <laughs> most likely just stand from the shore and it's a lot easier. Um. Yeah. What size net is that? Uh, that's about a five foot net and three eighths quarter mesh. So that's a hard one. That's a really good cast right there. Cool. Damn. I had a hard time pulling it up. <laughs> and limits is two buckets? Two buckets. Right on. It used to be unlimited, but then, you know. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they got a little worried. Like, you know, it, it. <laughs> so, so it's two buckets each now. I know this is your first year. This is one thing, man. This is sweet. This is sweet. You make me walk. I'm going to find your own. Yeah. 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 I know you like it. I know you like it. I love 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 it. Alright, alright. So basically, that's the. What are we talking about here? We're talking about some. Real life herring hunting. Man, it's so happy. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. The man's happy and I'm happy for him. <laughs> he's, he's heard about the herring run from me all these years and he finally got on one, so he was just like ecstatic. So let the man have his, have his herring. All right. Uh, Is it hard to keep them like with the scales and looking good? Um, you know what you do? The, the trick really here with those is that you have to have ice on the spot. Uh, yeah, you have a bucket of ice on the spot. And when you catch them up, just throw them straight on the ice and take the water and put it on there because it's salt water. Uh -huh. And so it reduces the temperature even farther and it just freezes them right on the spot. Uh -huh. And then what you got to do is right when you get home, you got to seal them right away. Okay. And if you do that, not seal them, not, not like a vacuum seal, just put them in like a, um, a, um, a, a picnic. Hat. Yeah, uh -huh. and just put them in and just store them away. And when you're ready to use them for the um, the season, you pull them out and then you brine them. There's a there's yeah. a show, but there's a way I show you guys how to brine them. Yeah. So brine them, and then it looks like perfect. It looks okay. like perfect. All the scales are in there. It's super um, thing. And when the salmon or anything sees it, it's just like boom, wow. right okay. away, right away. So so that's the herring spawn. I'm I'm very I'm always excited to share this with you guys and with the larger community as large. But I'm also, as much as I, I like to share, I'm also very, if you guys know me, I'm actually very I'm much, um, I'm, I'm not to say conservative, is that conservative? Like, you get to a point where like, you know you can catch any fish, so you really, you'd be more very conserved about how, how you worry about just not what you catch today, but how it affects later on. Right. So I, I'm very much about con uh, conservationism too. And I, um, and, and, and the herring people have been talking to me about joining part of the, their, their advisory committee to talk to the, um, the, the California Deficient, uh, Department of Fishing Game to get them uh, ideas on quotas and stuff like that for next year. So, so I might be joining them and, um, and speaking on behalf of the recreational uh, fishermen for the herring spawn. That's so, fantastic. Cool. Well, how do they know? I, I'm a nut. I don't know. <laughs> no, honestly, but apparently I, I have some clout in this in this field. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's a lot of fun. I encourage you guys uh, to to get on that on the herring spawn. If 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 not to save bait to catch bait, bring the kids. It's such an easy way to catch for them to catch. You will know with a with a speaky. Oh man, they have a blast just catching them. And I guarantee you, they'll they'll be hooked right away. But uh, it's but you know the best way is to follow my website because I have a, a whole community there that you know they they're commenting and telling you when when something's happening, 
and um, I'll follow up with them. And then once I get a confirmed um, spawn, like I know it's happening around the area, then I'll, I'll, I'll post on the, on the website that this is confirmed and that this is happening. And then you guys can try to get on them. Wow. Other, way, other than that, you really don't know how to get on them. <laughs> so from when you get a real confirmation, mm -hmm. I'm sure someone sends you a video or yeah. whatever, what's the window frame that, that you have? And I know they move yeah. to different spots and there's different schools yeah. and stuff like right. that. They'll, they'll, they'll roughly uh, spawn at a place um, for about two to three days. That's so they'll, they'll, they'll start in earnest like in, in the first day and you'll start seeing them come in, right? And the second day will be a really good spawn right around the same time. So if they're spawning at 1 o'clock and p.m., then the next day they'll most likely be coming in around 1 o'clock p.m. as well. Or maybe just about 30 minutes or 40 minutes after that, just depending on the tide. And then the, the third day they'll, they'll do that one time, then they'll, they'll usually disappear. You know, so then they'll move on to the next spot. So you have to kind of have to kind of stay on top of, of when they're starting to spawn and you hopefully try to get it on the first or second or third day or that they're, they're going to be moving on. So it's really, really tight window. I think the day that I went with Matt was actually the third day and he got really lucky because he called me the day or me and him could contact each other and I said, it's the third day Matt, I'm not sure. And so uh, he said, let's just go. So me and him, we just took off. And, uh, and I said, okay, they were roughly around this area. So I mean, and then, then I just looked at the birds and see where they were diving. And then I said, okay, I think they're around here. And then we threw a few casts and all of a sudden they just started coming in. So oh, wow. that's, how, that's how me and him got on, on it as well. That's sweet. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's be, not just because it's, it's such a big, it's, 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 it's like an experience. You got experience more than it's, um, you know, just catching. It's just an experience, you yeah. know, and, and being out there and visiting mm -hmm. all these people and they're catching and everyone's having fun. It's just, it's, it's something, you know, so. Generally speaking, what's the depth of, of the water where they're spawning? They're spawning right around the rocks, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very shallow. You can, yeah. it's not, you, sometimes you can just look down and you can see them swimming around. I just say that because the very first time I went on the kayak out, out, uh, out of the harbor in mm -hmm. we, we ran into a, a bait ball. Again. Yeah. It was my very first time out in the ocean. Yeah. On a kayak. Right. And, and uh, the whale, whale came up right in front yeah. of us, yeah. which was amazing. You know, it was from the kayak. Mm -hmm. See that, right? <laughs> yeah. so you've seen that a few times. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the very first time. Like, that just so, out. Out. I think that was only 50 feet, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, well, when they're spawning in the bay, they're like they're spawning right up on the rocks. So a lot of people get stuck on the rocks quite a lot when they're actually cast netting. So you have to kind of know how the contours are and and try to throw away from the rocks sometimes, or stay on a pier away from the rocks. So um, it's easier to catch. Like yeah, there's like <laughs> locations, uh, and I'll give you guys the locations. On, it's, it's on my website as well. Uh, uh, popular locations are Ferry Point in uh, in Richmond. Uh, another one is uh, Sausalito. The last few years has been Sausalito. It's been uh, Spinnaker Drive, right by the, the Spinnaker um, restaurant. That's been another popular place the last few years. Uh, Fishman's um, Point down by the South Bay, Coyote Point is also a very um, popular place as well, and also Paradise Pier. Though those are you know the, 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 the main places they tend to spawn at, right? But they, they do spawn all of them. Are they like salmon, so they, they hone in or go to one specific place every year like a school or yeah. family yeah well in some places they'll go off in a year but those these are the most common areas that they they go to and i think majority of the, the spawns according to department of fish and game is uh, roughly in sausalito area mm -hmm. so majority of them but i've, I've caught them all in very point all of them and, and we had some big spawns over there as well yeah last year they were uh they're by the chase center. Yeah, they're by the chase center as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of people were over there catching a lot of them. Yeah. That was a lot of fun there as well. So it's a lot of fun, right? <laughs> it's fun. It is. Does, it, does the tide make a difference? Uh, yeah, the tides. I mean, you, you usually go on the, the turn of the tides. So sometimes if, if you're on, on the herring run, you can see them. I can see them just laying offshore, right? I can just see balls of them just laying offshore. And as the tide starts to run, 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 all of a sudden you start seeing them start, start uh, coming in. Obviously, the incoming yeah, tide. you start yeah, the incoming arrival, whatever drives them in. The tide changes, then they start all moving in, and all of a sudden one people caught one, two catch a three, four, and then all of a sudden people's like boom, boom, seven, eight, ten, and then it's just whole nets. So yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Do you, do you ever see like uh, schools of seals or other animals that are following them mm -hmm. and then spook them and they disappear? And that's what you're looking for. If, if you're if you're if you're fishing for them, you're looking for this. Where are the seals? Because the seals are following the schools. Mm -hmm. So if the seals are coming closer and closer to the, your area, then you know that they're pushing the schools closer, closer, because uh, they're doing that, right? Okay. So if the seals are hanging all the way out there. You know, they're just yeah. seals, you know the, the schools are out there and the birds are laying out there. But most likely you're gonna see the water start moving, you're gonna see the seals start pushing in, you start to see the, the birds start moving in, and then you know that they're all, everything underneath there is, 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 is starting to happen. So, um, but That's you gotta be cool. careful. The seals sometimes though, 
they'll get aggressive and they'll start biting your nets and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> it depends on time of the year. Sometimes yeah. they're filled up, they just want to sit down, they don't want to do anything else. But sometimes they're like, hey, I, they'll, they'll start attacking your nets. So, so, so you got to be really careful wow. about that. <laughs> You're going to lose lots of nets. <laughs> just the price of doing it, the business. They go up and they, they get entangled in the net and they just take off and... Uh, no, they'll just bite or... your net. They'll actually just see, they'll see all these herring come up in yeah. the net. Try to and then they'll, they'll grab the net and they'll, they'll rip it. They'll, like, they'll try to bite it and oh. rip it and then they'll try to get some and they'll just get one or two. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got to be a little careful with them sometimes. Yeah. Them rascals. Brass, so rascals, rascals, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so there's, um, so there's my website here. So. This is the thing, and this is, shows you how to do it, that how to fish the annual herring swan. That's the link there. And um, I try to update that as much as I can. Um, the more I learn, I, I, I try to update that. Okay, so um, the next one is uh, the shiner perch. So shiner perches uh, are really good because you can use them early on in the season before all the bait has come into the bay. Uh, usually a lot of guys like to just go and catch, um, uh, and go and buy some anchovies, but if the anchovies aren't, aren't around, you can catch the shiner perches and they can be found underneath docks, along pilings, piers, near rocks and drop-offs. Um, so whenever you can find them, all you need really is just a sabiki line and, um, and you want to just use a sabiki and you know sabikis are just six rods, I think, right? In the bay yeah. you only use three, but you know other places you can use more. And then what you want to do is you just want to use a little bit of, um, what do you call it, uh, shrimp. But the shrimp with the head, the shrimp with the head is, is kind of the key there because it has a little scent to it, huh. right? And so you, you dip that on and you go next to a piling and you just kind of jig, jig, jig around until you pit one or two shiners. And then once you find one, you find more. And then you, you start, you know, loading them up. And you don't need, on a fishing day, you wouldn't need more than like five or six or something like that, you know? Huh. Um, and, and they're really great. They're really hardy too, you know? And when a, and a halibut hits them, it's just like, wham! It, over. <laughs> it doesn't hit the same when you're trolling, but they, when they see a shiner, they just Ram it. Like, <laughs> I want that. That's Mo what they do. Moo Moo's on. Moo Moo. Who is Moo the clown? Who is this clown? <laughs> God, Moo Moo, I don't know. God. He's here. All right. So, jack smelt and top smelt. Actually, uh, a few years ago, top smelt wasn't actually a real big thing in, in the Bay Area, apparently. It was just like no one had sold jack smelt, a uh, top smelt, right? And, and so I guess uh, a few of us have been using top smelt for a while, like the guys who know what they're doing have been using top smelt for a while. And we had put out on, on the internet and now all of a sudden, like a lot of people are using it. So, <laughs> so uh, and then all of a sudden the bait stores are selling them too. So, uh, but uh, these, the, the top smelt are always around. They're the cousins of the jack smelt. And the jack smelt, you know, are bigger ones, right? Mm -hmm. The ones you catch out in the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. And those are actually my go-to lures, uh, go-to bait when I go in the ocean to catch like a halibut, halibut or halibut. to catch a lingcod, I yeah. use, I just go and jig up jack's milk and I just send them down and boom. Just you prefer them. that over other, uh, the other baits? Oh, if I can find them, I, I throw yeah. them down for sure. Okay. They just get, in, they instantly get annihilated, you wow. know. Um, <clears throat> hmm? Just in, just a speaking room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, but you have to find them though. They're kind of yeah. like mid-level, right? No, they're right, right at the top. They're right, right at, at the top. top. And right now, they're like, if you're looking for jack's milk right now, you can find them right at the, in Half Moon Bay, they're right at the, the red can. I don't know how to explain it. There's a little area I know but they like to hang around between the red and the green can, but they're just right in the area and you can just see them schooling all the time, like hundreds of them, just like boom, 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 boom. Oh, wow. And then you can just boom, 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 boom. And then you, they have like really nice candy sized ones just like that. Yeah. And I boom, boom, I put them up and I send them down right away. Do like three, four cranks up so it doesn't get stuck onto the rocks. And then I find nice little ledges and, and drop offs. And, and either there's always got to be a halibut there or, or a lingcod there. Mm -hmm. And the halibut there is going to be like 30, 33, 36 inches or so halibut that hang out there. And um, I'll just do them and then that's, and then, then Moo stole my idea. In his last video, he took it and he's like, oh, this is what Chuck <clears throat> uses. So he's, <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, hey guys, like, I'm, this is what I use. <laughs> Lies. I taught you everything, man. <laughs> All right, so, he then, uh, so yeah, that's what you do. But in, in, in the bay, you can use top smelt. And top smelt are just the, the smaller version of, of the jack smelt. And uh, what you can do, you can find those at um, any park. Like ARW has them as well. All you have to do is grab a bunch of, um, um, what do you call it, uh, crackers and bread and just find the little area and just throw it over there. And eventually all of them will just kind of co start congregating around them. And then right as they start congregating, you, you throw a cast net out and then you can pull them up right really? away. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how you do it. They're also in um, Oyster Point, Ferry Point, San, San Leandro Park, San Leandro uh, Bay. They're all over the bay. So you just have to know where, how to get them to, to, to congregate and cast your net out and catch them. Wow. Right? 
Well, can you do that with a sabiki rig? Just go no, up and just spot and just throw out some bread out there? No, the, these guys are like small. They're like anchovy size, like no bigger than anchovies, like a really oh, okay. nice one. Yeah. But they're super sturdy. I mean, they'll, they'll stay, they'll last like the whole day. Um, oh. and, and these guys, like you're, you're using a live bait rig and you're sending one of these guys off on a, on a, on a, on a ledge, yeah. get hammered by a hammer, uh, get hammered by a halibut instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can, if they're dead, just put, put them in troll them, dude, they'll get hammered too. Yeah. You know, don't have to waste too much money on, on, on buying all this, you know, stuff. Yeah. Are there limits on that? Hmm? Uh, no. Not on these guys. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the regulations too, right? okay? Uh, so, just beaky lures and cast nets can be used to catch jack smell. Cast nets can be used to catch top smell. Uh, like I said, use some uh, some crackers and some some bread to, to lure in the top smell and then cast over net with them. Okay? Uh, squid. Squid. Who likes squid? I love squid. I love squid. Awesome. We love Squid's squid. Good. That's Candy. <clears throat> He's like, Chovy, is that squid? I was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you want to go out? <laughs> and whenever I want Moody to go somewhere, I just tell him there's squid. And he goes. <laughs> it, is, it just has to have an idea that it's, it's out there to go. Squid King. Yeah, that's <laughs> Squid King. He is a Squid King. Uh, yeah, uh, last year, I think last year was a really great year that we got on the squid. And they were in Monterey, right? Uh, right next to the green uh, red can, you know, the lover's point is by the red can right there. Oh man, they were just stacked over there, right? And there was like, you know, I was able to catch like 30 pounds of it. And there's no upper limit for it. They're just great. And, I, and we eat them, we eat them all, dude. We just like, <laughs> right on the spot, just fillet them and throw them, throw them in a, a fryer and get calamari, right? Yeah. Ooh, they're great. And then also the uh, actually excellent bait. I mean, if I had an option, I'd always use the squid because I'll just take the, wherever, wherever squid hangs, there's other things around them, okay? Obviously, you know, the one fish that likes it the most, you guys know, the Link most elusive. Okay. Halibut. The most elusive fish. Oh, sea bass? White sea bass. Oh, sea bass. <laughs> the white sea bass no are the kidding. most elusive okay. fish. And yet, they, you know, when, when guys want to know how to catch a sea bass, they go straight for the squid. Really? They go find where, not just where the squid are, where the squid spawns are. Mm -hmm. That is the, the telling tale of how to get on a white sea bass. Mm -hmm. Because the white sea bass, I mean, the squid are around and they'll, they'll be around, but they won't actually start actively feeding until the squid spawns. Because what happens, and, and, and it's, it's on my website, is that once the squid spawns, like on the bottom of the ocean floor, they die. And when they die, they start just floating through the water column, right? And so when the sea bass goes, like, dude, that's like the easiest meal for me in the world. Right? Yeah. It's just like, like I'm just like a free buffet for them. And so they're just swimming around, like popping, popping squid, oh, wow. right? And that's what they do. And so what you're doing, and what you're technically doing, is you're taking a squid and you're, and you're putting it right in the mix. You're putting a dead squid right in the mix of, of that buffet. And then as the sea bass are coming around, they just blam, hit it and they'll run off. And, and, that's, and that's what guys do, they, they go look for squid spawns. Because that's, that's where it is. I mean, my biggest fish from white sea bass to halibut has been always been over squid spawns. Because the halibut will know and they'll just go, they'll just start heading right to the squid spawn and they'll, they'll start eating all the, the thing as well. And then sea bass and everything in the world goes around squid spawns. And so that's, it's such a great time, right? Especially around the full moon is to start looking for these squid spawns because uh, squid actually start to spawn around, roughly around the full moon area, time, right? And all the, um, the big squid boats know that as well. So they usually just wait, wait until around, right around the full moon time and then they'll, you start seeing them, they start congregating up around an area where they know where the squid are and then they'll start netting them. Right. And how, uh, how big do you use the, how big are the squid that you're using and stuff like that? Is it, because I've, I've been, well, we go out on a charter and yeah. we gig for, uh, we, sometimes we mm -hmm. catch some squid along yes. with the, with the uh, okay. an, anchovies and stuff like that mm -hmm. that we're catching. But uh, they're only like this big, I mean, yeah. they're small ones. Yeah, they're small ones. I mean, I mean, so the, I mean, the head to size, I mean, they're like the ones you would buy off the, off the um, what do you call it? The, the, full market? Yeah, the full market. So they're you know, they're nice, like like six six inch squid, yeah. you know, like this. Um, sometimes you get smaller ones as well, but it doesn't really matter because just you know they're eating whatever they're eating, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean if you get those bigger really, squid, bigger fish. Yeah, exactly. I mean yeah. if you can get the, the the squid with the nice tails like this and that that kind of that kind of floats, right? Yeah. Those are the ones that the sea bass will just they'll just annihilate, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, one day I was going to and you know I'll, I'll tell you the stories along the way. One day I was, I was getting on the white sea bass bite and, um, <clears throat> and all that, I couldn't have any squid. So I, I, my friend had given me some older squid and I was like, oh man, this is not gonna work. So I, I, went to the, I went to the dock 
early in the morning and I just saw the big squid boats coming in and they're just unloading, right? So I asked the guy, I said, hey, dude, let me get, let me get like a five bucket, five uh, gallon bucket on you for how many dollars? Give him 20 bucks, right? And he said, yeah, dude, here, just loaded me up. Give, give me a whole five gallon bucket, right? <laughs> and he just, he just gave it to me. He said, here, here you go, bro, no worries. All right, and it just it's big, oh, big squid jumbo. like this, jumbo, fresh, <laughs> just like, oh, this is ridiculous, bro. <laughs> I'm getting a hard on watching this. Thing. <laughs> All right, so so I'm here like having this this squid, right? And then like I go out there, and I'm like, okay, this is it, this is it, this is the day, right? Right, nine o'clock comes around, and I got like my, four of my lines out there, right, just flying out there. And then all of a sudden, dude, it's like in the middle of the week, and all of a sudden you start seeing like the guys out there on the farther side. You you, you can hear them, zoom, 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 right? And it's just like a ripping line, right? And you know, and you can just see the school coming in. Like you can just see them coming in. You can hear them coming in, right? And then boom, 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 boom. And everyone's just getting hit. And then you're like, oh my God. And so I just like, and then right when I, right when I just start trying to put things away, get ready, my back pulls just goes, Arr! just rushes, it's a ripping line, just bring out 300 yards right off the bat. And then uh, right when I just like, oh crap, I grab it and I put it away. And right when I start putting my other rods away, like my second rod just runs ro over and it just starts ripping line. And then I start running at, you know, start trying to figure out how to, play these two fish at the same time and these are these are good sized fish like a 40 50 pound sea bass right and then and my boat starts getting up to another boat that had four on <laughs> one guy wow. had four on he had four on <laughs> right and him and my line start tangling up each other and so we had to work ourselves out of this whole mess and yeah anyways long story short i was able to get those two sea bass on the boat and i was able to get a third one so i was able to get three sea bass using squid on that wow. day wow so that was an absolutely true story. I wasn't a YouTuber back then, so if you have to believe me, or I might be lying. I could be lying. I could completely be lying. So it's a fish story. Fish stories. But uh, yeah, but that's what it is. So you can just for, so for with squid, you're just gonna be using a basic squid jig. You know, they sell them around. You can just sell them. They're not any barbed or anything. They're just you just jigging, jigging, jigging. Then you feel like a whole bunch of weight, and then you just pull them up, and then and as they come up, they just start squirting ink everywhere. So do you have do you have a preference between uh, like the crowns or particular type of squid squid jigs for, or versus uh, sabikis. Sabikis work. I mean, early on before I, I, I was using sabikis and they worked really well. Then I just started using these. Um, and but sabikis with sabikis they have um, they have uh, you know the barbs, so you know yeah. they're a little bit hard to get off. Okay. So I just I recently just like just using the squid jigs because they're barbless. So you just pull them up and they just shake pop them. off. Yeah, they pop them. I just shake them off and they pop them. Right off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but in Monterey, they, they have them quite a lot. Santa Cruz, Montara. Um, Moss Landing. Moss Landing That's where as it was well. hot this Yeah, year. exactly. Yeah. They're actually were outside, right side of Moss Landing, right? Yeah. 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 You right see up, the big squid. Right at the harbor, yeah, yeah, right yeah after harbor. salmon fishing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's these are all the hot spots right there, man, for sure. So a lot of guys just like to um to do that. How so, long do they hang around for? Hmm? Uh, squid? Uh, I, I can't really tell you. I mean, sometimes they'll stay long for a long time. Sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll bounce, they'll move. Right, and sometimes like last year, a few years ago when they were in Mon uh, Monterey, they were there for like weeks. They're like a whole there for like a whole month, right? And but they were only spawned like like certain times, other times. But this year they were like there, and then they bounced over to to, to over you know to um to Moss Landing, Moss Landing and they've been yeah. staying there. So. Yeah. so it's hard. It's not. It's not like it's not like chasing like um what do you call it? Not chasing like a herring or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once they're there for a while, they might just stay there for a while. Okay. Sometimes like at the wharf at yeah. Santa Cruz Wharf, we yeah. see them a bunch, and you see all the boats there. Yeah. Um, and then right now we have mackerel out of Capitola Pier right exactly. now is coming in, which yeah. is good for bluefin if we yeah, get exactly. lucky. But yeah. So yeah, 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 it's cool. Yeah, mackerel, yeah, mackerel. Uh, I've just talked briefly mackerel because you guys want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, mackerel is really good, uh, especially around, I think, around Santa Cruz Pier, around uh, Capitola. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the map and even in front of Moss Landing, they, I've, I've oh, found yeah. lots of them out there. And they're really just following the schools of anchovies. Wherever the anchovies are, they like to feed them the anchovies. And so wherever you find the schools of anchovies, you also find a school of mackerel that they tend to be feeding on them as well. Hmm. And what you do is you just use a sabiki line lure and then you can jig them and then you get in a big mess. Because <laughs> there's just gotta be like five or six of them rolling around. Um, so you can just cut it down to like three lines and then you'll be more manageable, right? Yeah. Or if you're at the Santa Cruz Pier when the mackerel are in, or if you're at the Monterey Pier when the mackerel are in, you can just use um, a bobber on top and just send them out there and, and, and put a little bit of a scent or a little bit of anchovies or something on each of the line and then you send them out and then they'll, they'll, they'll get on them faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good tour. I mean, one of the things you can also do is fun, is just put like a, 
like a, a cast master, you know, cast master, uh-huh. and you put a little bit of anchovies, you send them out there, just real, real, real slow, and boom, just hit up these little macros. Really? And they're a lot of fun to do that too, you know? A little trout powder. Yeah, a little trout powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just cast and cast, and you're like, shoot, shoot, like, oh. That sounds fun. <laughs> that does sound fun. Yeah, it is. I, I used to do it all the time, man. It was, it was, it was, it was a riot. You know, and all these, and I looked over and I said the Filipino dude was like six, and I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm here for sport, here for food. We're, we're on the same page. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Anchovies. Anchovies have gotten so expensive this last year, but let's let's figure out a way to catch them, huh? Yeah. Okay. Apple Bay, there are a bunch of them are outside right now. Santa Cruz, Moss Landing, Monterey, Capitola, Stinson. Uh, are all great uh, areas to find anchovies. Anchovies are not hard to find, they're just huge, big bait balls. So you can just use a sabiki, didn't use them. If you want to use them for the day, you can use a sabiki. If you want to catch them in mass, you can go to Santa Cruz, um, Santa Cruz um, Wharf. Pier, Wharf. And don't do what I do there, because I had a 33 quarter mesh right there. And use a one quarter, use a one quarter mesh. About this size right here. So you need the mesh that, that is at least one quarter size, about that size. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and to this, the, 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 the length, I see the, how, the radius of it matters. It really matters is because anchovies, they move fast, right? Yeah. We run away. <laughs> <laughs> so you, first of all, you need the one quarter mesh or you're going to get the three quarter mesh. It's all going to get gilled up and you're going to have to be picking through them. And that that's not sense, a very yeah. good thing. Okay, so you need at least the one quarter mesh, and you need at least a five foot, um, a five to six foot um, diameter. Diameter. It's because the weight matters in terms of of, of sinking, okay? right? Because if you have less than, or say you had a four foot and you have a quarter mesh, mm-hmm. it's not going to catch them because the weights aren't fast enough to sink down to actually get them. So you need at least, I think it's like six feet or something. I can't remember exactly. It's got to be at least six feet or something. So it has enough weight in order to, to drop down fast enough to get it. Oh, them. so that's how you catch them. Is that's you it. catch them on the way down yeah. Yeah. rather than on the way back. Yeah, you catch them, they're, they're like here, and, and then they're just getting caught. Yeah, just getting caught and then you drink the them down. and you pull oh, them up. I see, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and when they're so thick, like they are in Santa Cruz or in Capitol or in any of these areas you can throw for them, you can just catch them and then do the same thing you're doing with the herring, put them in, in ice right off the bat and come home and then just seal them right away and then you can use them later on. You ever modify and add more weight to the net? Like, it's harder. It's just you just want to have it the way it is because it has to open up because when you're throwing a net, it has to open up like completely. Evenly. So yeah, without the, the weights are evenly distributed. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're putting in and you don't, it, it, will, just, it will just be weird. And you okay. Catch it. Yeah. Or I'm not smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, as long other. as you can catch bait, that's all it means. How's it going? Hello. Hi. Hi. So, like, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, as a Filipino, he'd be like, Dad, we do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> you, you would do it all the way from, from up here, from up that height? Yeah, you know, the closer you can get to the water, the better. You know, they have, they have these little pilings and that, pilings, these little ramps and stuff you can kind of get off and walk yeah. down and get them. Yeah, yeah, but you can catch them from the top of the pier, too. That works, and I've done it. Yeah, there's a yeah. the little ramp down there. <laughs> yeah. And so this one is actually from the Santa Cruz Pier itself that I was yeah. I was caught on, and I used a bunch of these, and I think I caught a salmon using one of these these anchovies right here, okay. Um, and usually you're gonna find these anchovies at the um, at the mouth of inlets, right? So you're gonna look at inlets, you're gonna look at in the mouth of harbors, and that's where they're gonna be. Um, at Bolinas, that's this year they had a big die off this year because all the, the anchovies got pushed into the lagoon, right? Oh. Yeah, and they, and they just like got stuck there, right? And so they died off of there. Oh, wow. But, um, but in front of uh, Bolinas is a huge place. There's lots of lots of um, anchovies there as well. Okay, uh, right now Happen Bay has a lot of them. Okay, so California fishing and regulations. So this is important. It's if you if you're bait fishing, they're just it's fishing like any other fish. There are regulations, there are things you got to figure out, and you got to know, or else you're gonna get in trouble. So the state of California mandates that um, when we fish the oceans, the bays, the waters, each of us have to have our own uh, fishing license. So that's a, that's a known, right? If you're on a pier, you don't need it, but for the most part. Um, if you're gonna be fishing, you know, regularly, just go get a fishing license. It's like 54, 55 dollars or something like that. Um, you can use traps for shiner perch, for sturgeon, for sculpin, and all these things. I hardly ever use traps for them, anyways. But the the, the 28.80 is the the most uh, uh, more uh, important one, which is dip nets, which is different from cast nets. These are cast nets. These are what is uh, Hawaii. Uh, the DFG uh, refers to as Hawaiian. Um, they're called Hawaiian cast nets, okay? 
So there's no upper limit on these right here. Okay, these are called Hawaiian, and, and it says right here, Hawaiian type nets may be used north of Point Conception to take such species, and then they laid out the species uh, over there. So, um, so that's this, so right here, this is Shiner Perch, and then Tui just took his, and he threw, he says, no, you cannot catch this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, woo, he just bullied you, bro. <laughs> but uh, north of Point Conception, we are good to go with, with using these nets in order to catch the, the bait fish. And it's either gonna be um, it's either gonna be a Saviki line or it's gonna be this. And this is where I catch it. And this is where I save money. And I actually I don't really care so much. I just like catching them anyways. I'm out there catching them. I put them away for next time and I and use them, right? So sometimes what I do also is that I have brine ready, like you know the brine that I show you guys. And when I catch an anchovy, I'll just take it off and I just throw it straight into the brine, and then it'll be ready the so next time I'll use it. So I just like I'll just sabiki up like twelve of them. I'll put it in there, and that's like twelve sabikis. That's twelve anchovies for next time. Yeah. Right. I thought I read somewhere that we, if you use a cast net off of a boat, mm -hmm. that it the like there's a certain size restriction. Yeah, there's a certain size restriction for that. Like four I foot really, or something. I've been like looking that. at that specifically for that regulation. I have not been able to find it anywhere. Okay. Someone said that. Someone someone re referenced it, but I, I can't guarantee because I can't look anywhere in the whole reg. If I find it, I'll let you know. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was like four foot. Four foot. Yeah, maybe it's some obscured like some or something. I can't remember exactly where I found it. But someone said that, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the word for it, but I'm also checking through all my regs and through because that's the only thing that's gonna defend you if yeah. yeah. something happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I haven't been able to find it myself. Okay. Okay. Got 36 inches there. Yeah. But that's for a dip nets. Those inches. are for dip nets and for, um, for dip nets. you know what dip nets are? Dip nets are like uh, these things that people use to catch um, smell, surf smell, you know so? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they go in the surf smell and they go like, those yeah. are dip nets. Those are dip nets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a very few people like, Kirk Lombard likes that kind of stuff. <laughs> he's, he's a great guy, by the way, Cutter. Uh, okay, so um, remembering the law is important as part of a regulating our fishing industry, so everyone can continue to um, to to partake in, in in the fishery. So I'm a very big um, proponent of, of of fish management and doing it correctly, but not for politically. I'm mean, correctly I'm using the data and using understanding what's really happening up there, not going on Facebook and saying a bunch of people catch fish and say, okay, well that's overfishing <laughs> no show me the data show me your over, you know what you're doing and yeah and then we'll, we'll you know I because I believe the science and um, the scientists that do it let's do that okay all right so it's say terminal tackle uh, cast nets are great to catch bait fish uh, they come in various sizes obviously they come in various sizes they have a uh, half net three eighths inches and one quarter inches and they come in, in the diameters five feet six feet eight feet whatnot right the better you are at it um, the bigger nets you can cast with. I normally would, would fish between a six and seven to eight. Those are, that, that's my comfort range. I can you know, go up to like 10 feet if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people aren't as good. After a while, you, you get it, but you know, you can start low, go high later on. Is, is, uh, is six like a good starting point for a beginner yeah. kind of person? Okay. Yeah, because yes. as, as small as you get, sometimes you're, it's not gonna have enough weight to sink down. Gotcha. So you have to get into that six to eight weight range for it to sink down to catch your, okay. especially when you're going for a herring or herring. something. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so Matt, Matt, it's a funny story, and Matt, if you're watching, Sorry. Uh, so, so we, me and Matt were there, and he had, had, and this is his first year fishing mm -hmm. for, you know, for, for herring, and he had used a, um, a four foot or five foot, smaller, you know, and he was throwing, he couldn't get it mm -hmm. because it was not sinking fast enough to get the herring. So I had a bigger net that day, on that day on the video, and I said, here, you can use this net. And as he cast it, he finally got down fast enough to get him. Oh, so nice. it okay. does matter diameter because of the weight and how fast it goes down to yeah. actually get the, the fish. Okay, um, sabikis are good. Uh, it runs from 16 to 14 if you're in San Jose. Um, I'm sure my Lord does. Where did my Siddiqui Lord go? I just had it with me. Okay. 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 I guess I didn't have it with me. Okay. Um, so Lures run from six to fourteen. I usually try to get the smallest um, size, which is between twelve and fourteen for for like uh, anchovies and cyanide perches, and they have a small mouth. So you want to try to get the smallest, um, you know size uh, sabiki as you can and that's what I use um, to catch these guys okay and and also squid jigs and then slurp guns so one 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 bait that I didn't really talk about is um, that I'll, I'll just briefly mention because I don't want to talk about too much because um, 
because most people don't use it, is um, shrimp. You know the shrimp that you guys use for sturgeon in the winter? Mm -hmm. So you can build slurp guns and then you can go into harbors such as Half Moon Bay and, and Moss Landing during negative tides and they have these little holes and you can just slurp up um, uh, uh, like shrimp. And they're really good size shrimp, right? And you can use them to go catch sturgeon. There you go. Okay, so well, that's... Fun with the kids. <laughs> yep, and they're a lot of fun with kids. Yeah. So uh, these are all Bay Area species. Um, you have your sturgeon, right, which uses shrimp. So shrimp, grass shrimp, and gold shrimp, and uh, salmon roe. So that's the bait you would use for that. You have your rockfish, which then would be like uh, squid. You need know, to squid in order to get, you know, get that scent. Anchovies work as well. You got your salmon, which use um, anchovies and herring. So those are the two primary bait for anchovies and herring. You got your crab, which uses um, squid. Uh, herring and also uh, what else? It's a few cat food, which is not real food. <laughs> chicken, chicken, chicken and cat food. That's yeah. a big palate. Yeah, yeah. No, that's just move pointing it closer. Yeah. Then, then, then you got your halibut. Obviously, you know, you got your uh, your herring and you got your um, china perches and your top smell for for halibut. And then, you know, that's me. Funny story, that last one here right here was on a rainy day. I was the only kayaker out there on a rainy day. <laughs> crazy enough to go and catch sea bass. But that was actually wow. my last sea bass in Monterey during that big run. Wow. And I was just out there in the rain. It wasn't cold rain, it was warm rain. And uh, there's another boat there with me and he's just looking at me like, this guy's nuts. <laughs> it's pretty much true, it's pretty, pretty happy <laughs> in that. And, uh, and the first, the first uh, sea bass came and he hit it. And, and I, yeah, I felt it just go, start going, and then it just, I had it just for a second, and it popped off. I was like, oh no, I'm in the rain, can't give me a fish. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, let's try this again. I talked right? to God a lot, too. Yeah. Like, Come on, God. Yeah. yeah. So Hook make, me up. Let's make a deal here. Yeah. All right. And so, we, so I put another fresh one on, I sent it out there, and within a few minutes, I just, and I got this one. So it was, nice. it was probably the same fish, but maybe. maybe <laughs> but uh, he, he ran, and I fought him for about 45 minutes or so in the rain, and I was able to get him up. So that's, so that's that. Those are the species mainly in the area. But, you know, if you go freshwater fishing, you got your kokanee, you got your bass and all that stuff. And that's another story for another time. Deadliest cast. Steve, yeah, yeah. Steve says, let me hear more about those. I've never caught one before. <laughs> <laughs> so these are different sea seasons and species. You got your herring, which is coming up. Since we're heading into the, 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 the fall now, we're heading into the, um, the winter, right? Uh, you'll, you'll start looking at herring roughly around December time, uh, December, end of December, January, February, March, with the main uh, spawn happening around January and February. And I would almost say the NFC AFC Championship. They like that weekend for whatever. Screw with our football. <laughs> they, it's, 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 it's the football season. Hey, that's smart. They love smart. it. It's like, hey, all these guys are just busy drinking beer. I'm going to yep. go spawn, man. <laughs> check, check my business, right? That's how they survive. Yeah, that's how they do. And so you have your halibut roughly April, May, June, and that's, that's when you go catch your smelt, your shiner, perch, and whatnot. It's like rockfish, link cod, the same I thing. I love this chart. So, uh, yeah. So this chart will be on my book that I will eventually send out one day and before I die, hopefully. Yeah. I have written it. I have written it. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's it. And that's all I have for today. Any questions, answers, and hopefully you guys enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to steal the information. That way I don't have to buy the book. Now you can die. Okay, all right. Now you can die. All right, so you guys have anything, you can always just email me at keith at the last and um, everything's on the website anyways. Have you ever had any of these uh, hmm? big fish uh, tow your kayak out? And yes, your yes, I did. I, I was out in Shelter Cove. Story. I was out in Shelter Cove one day, and um, I was fishing. This is, I swear, it's a true story. Okay, once again, it wasn't on YouTube, so it wasn't real. <laughs> uh, possibly not real. Um, <laughs> I was fishing out there, and I was fishing near the red can, and I was out with my friend uh, Eric Lolita. Eric is a good friend of mine, and we're just fishing, and um, I had something just take my line, just douche, douche. And I swear to God, I thought it was a thresher shark. It's like, oh, another thresher shark, right? And, um, and it dragged me for a little bit, and as I, I started to get it up, it, I could never get it up. I just, it just started, just, 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 just. and then right when something just stops uh, running, right? Long story short, I finally got up to the point where I just saw a dorsal fin. Like this. <laughs> a dorsal fin. And then right as it went down, it went down. 
And all I saw was for the next two hours, I put my thing on the hardest thing I can put on, and I just sat there and I put it on my rod holder and I let it tow me for two hours. Oh my yeah, God. wow. It towed me for two hours straight. Yeah. And at some point, I was like getting about two or three miles or four miles offshore. And I was oh, like, geez. okay, this is potentially <laughs> getting dangerous. <laughs> yeah, potentially getting dangerous. And, I, and all I would hear on the radio was Eric saying, Keith, are you alive? And I was like, uh, I'm here, bro. Um, four miles offshore, I can kind of, hopefully, I don't think I make it. You know, so he goes, okay, just let me know if you're okay. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on you. Do you carry so, do you carry an E-perp or Yeah, or well, I, I, I know what my limits are and it's about four miles long. <laughs> so at, at that point I was like, okay, I love you, I gotta break you off. So I broke them off and then I, I got in. But that's the longest fish I ever fought, it's about two two hours. Uh, you know, um, I've had a, I, I've had a, a thresher shark I usually fight for about an hour and a half or so, but that was a two hour fight and, and I had to break that one off. We got a question so, from uh, Stello. Yes. He says, uh, how do you catch a saltwater sturgeon? A saltwater surgeon. Do they exist in salt water? Do you know the truth. Here's the truth. I don't know that question, so I'm gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> no, I seriously, you I don't know that question. Faces, so actually, I don't know I that question. Um, uh, I, I did see them in the ocean. Uh, one day, me and Mu were out in uh, Bolinas, and we saw something jump right behind us, and it was just like shh. And we caught it from our eye, just the diamonds on the side. So we knew it was a sturgeon, right? And he says, did you see what I just see? I was like, uh, was that a sturgeon? <laughs> like, yeah, it's a sturgeon. So they do exist in salt water. They actually uh, migrate in the salt yeah, and I, they run up north. But um, I've never caught one out there as well. So I can't tell you. Probably a very low percentage. <laughs> so that's all I have. Okay, any other questions, sir? Are you all live bait or do you run any plastics or swim baits or lures or? Uh, my personal preference has always been, li I'm a live bait fisherman myself personally, but, you know. but you know, I mean, people have used other things like lures and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and they work too. I just, I just personally like feeding them what they eat, you know. Um, this one day me and, <laughs> me and we were out in um, Pedro Point and there was a huge school of uh, strikers attacking all this anchovies and you can see right. boiling just like, tum, 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 grab it up right and and i threw out some anchovies or anything i had and it would just bite and um and then we threw out plastics and i have no idea why he would do that <laughs> i'm like i'm catching fish left and right and he throws out plastics i was like bro what are you doing it's like dude it's like dude they're like biting right now I'm like i don't know how long they're gonna bite he goes like oh i'm doing anchovy i got it don't worry <laughs> Long story short, I like I like bits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, any other questions? You, you mentioned something about grinding your, your the herring or anything. yeah, yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. So the brining uh, brining is great. So you always you want to preserve your bait, right? And brining is basically just salt and water and and what I use is a bluing agent. A bluing agent is called Mrs. Stewart's mm -hmm. bluing agent, mm -hmm. and that really just okay. brightens up the bait. It really break, makes a difference. So you see a bait like this, and you put it in there, and just like a big disco light, right? It just becomes a big disco light. Um, and you can find the bluing agent online. You can find it on um, just Amazon. You can buy it at a store. But uh, two squirts of it, and uh, a little bit of salt, canning salt, any type of salt, um, and some, some nice clean water, and that's all, right. that's all you need. Some people put in like, um, what's the thing? Like um, like uh, milk pudding or whatever. Is that? <laughs> like, like what's the thing milk uh dried milk that works too it's just supposedly help with the scales but i don't think the the cost is worth it um just salt and water just get the the, the ingredients right you know the proportions right and you know, you keep your baby so it, it freezes better than when you have mm -hmm. the brining you know when you brine it and you free let's say you freeze it mm -hmm. right does that help well, the fish better uh, I, I've done it both ways. I'd rather just brine it when, I, when I'm about to fish, when I'm about to use it, yeah. Yeah, so with the herring, I don't actually brine it before I do it. I just put them into the uh, plastic, like, you know, okay. dollar ones, bags, yeah. and then I just put Ziplocs, yeah, exactly. Uh, guys, like before, they like to seal it and stuff. I just think it's a waste to do that because I just put in these little 10 cents Ziploc bags yeah. and they yeah. work perfectly well. Just straight to your freezer. Just straight to the freezer. Okay. Just put that straight to the freezer. Oh, here's a tip. Here's a tip. Yeah. Secret tip. Money. Secret tip. Secret tip. So, I swear to God, once again, you're never going to hear me online say it. <laughs> oh, crap, I'm online. <laughs> okay, so the herring jizz. 
right? When yeah. you call it the herring jizz. Okay. <laughs> it's like the most potent fishing attractant in the world. I swear to God. Oh. So, so that thing is just smells. It's like any like anything that you can buy here is like that will outbeat it hands down. Okay, mm -hmm. herring jizz is like I don't know what it is. It's just <laughs> what it is. Yeah. So what I do is I just leave the herring to let them jizz when they're when they're catching, you know, it's oh, the geez. thing. And it's just doing the thing. And, <laughs> right? and so it just and when, when you get the herring, all you have is just this white, you know, milk from their thing. And so what you do is then when you when you when you put this herring away into the thing, mm -hmm. you pour some of that jizz inside of the thing and you seal it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it just soaks it. And what it does is just gives it like it just soaks it in the smell yeah. for like a long time. Yeah, 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 so yeah. when you're really to take it out and you're putting to brine it, it just it just soaks it in and it has that smell. And oh. exponentially it catches more fish. Oh, I mean wow. not oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Lou says a superstition. <laughs> he always calls me out on it, but I catch more fish. I catch more fish. Halibut and salmon. Yeah, I catch particular. more, way more than him. So you know what? I'm, call me what I make. Yeah. Call me what you make, bro. I catch more fish. <laughs> anyway, so that's so that's that. That's that. You know, that super TLA superstition. Hey, it works. It's not, it's not worth me. All right. But I skunk a lot too, and I don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Any, any other questions? Let's see if anyone's got a question from. I don't see any other question. We're good. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, man. We should have yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that cool. video. Thank you.